don't worry. Hey everybody. Yeah. Today I'd like to share uh, a really a really interesting experience and a conversation I've had with uh, with the person I met here at Mons in Ljubljana. Uh, so I I saw her husband who was uh, Japanese and uh, I mean who's Japanese and I went to him, you know, started 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 talking Japanese and he said, hey, come meet my wife, she's Italian. And I'm, uh, I'm here finding this uh, incredibly interesting woman who is, uh, well, bilingual and now tr tr three-lingual. And she's been uh, sharing her experience with how she learned Persian. And uh, I just thought it was so interesting for anyone who's uh, kind of interested in how to acquire a language. So we've had this great conversation. I wanted to share a, a bit of it with, with you guys. Hey. Oh, hello. Sorry, I'm feeding a baby. I ah, that's okay. okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Should I? Okay. Uh, right, hello. Yeah. Yes. I'm feeding a baby. <laughs> What's your name? Um, my name is Antonia Fraser Fujinaga, and I'm half Scots, half Italian, so my, na my maiden name is Fraser, and then my married name is Fujinaga. Great. Sorry about the um, ah. commotion. Uh, no problem. Are you okay with me recording or should I just... Yeah, yeah, it's fine, okay, it's fine. Perfect. I have a nursing aid, so... Yeah. <laughs> yes, the baby is imbibing nerd juice. Uh-huh. Okay. Nice. So, um, yeah. And, and so, so I... Uh, one of my questions is, I mean, you've, you've learned a very uh, obscure language, right? A language not many people try to learn. Yeah, I suppose... Which was that? Yeah, so Persian. Um, I suppose that most that it's quite rare for non-Iranians to know it. Mm. I guess it's not. It's mm. not unheard of. Mm. But yeah. And what uh, what was your like? What was your motivation to learn it? You, you were studying the law. It was um, well. It was quite random actually. I was um, I was beginning a degree in anthropology at the the University of Edinburgh, and I I. Um, had chosen anthropology just randomly because I was interested in so many things and I didn't know what, what to study and I thought well I'm interested in human nature so I guess I'll study anthropology but then they told us that we had to do some outside classes and so um, I was wandering through this thing called the academic fair which has some tables um, where people basically pedal their, their courses and I came across Persian and um, I spoke to the teacher and she seemed very rational and kind and I like those qualities and um, actually I, I, I turned out to be right about her because she ended up be becoming a good friend who came to my wedding years later but anyway I, I got the impression that she would be a good teacher and the classes had small sizes and I thought sod it I'll just study Persian why not I like learning languages I'll just study Persian so I started learning Persian um, and then um, in third year undergraduate in my uni uni university, and I think <coughs> in most universities in, in Britain, you have to go to the country or to a country which speaks the language that you're studying. So I had to go to Iran. Um, so I went to Iran. And then um, when I was there, um, I became intrigued because people kept talking about all these things like stoning to death and the hand amputation penalty for theft and all these things. And, and it was a topic of mystery um, and considerable disagreement because uh, some people were saying, um, oh no, these things don't happen. It's just the Westerners claiming they happen to make us look bad. And then others were saying, oh no, they do happen, but they happen secretly. Mm -hmm. You know, and others saying, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. You know, and then yet more people saying, yes, they do happen because that is the will of God. And we have to obey the will of God. And they say, okay, okay, what's really going on? And then, um, you know, the human rights com community outside Iran was um, also um, very interested but not very informed about these topics and every so often rumours would, would occur about someone that was effectively stoned to death and then Amnesty International would have maybe a paragraph or even one sentence like K, age 38, believed to be under sentence of death by stoning. Uh, in the province of Blah. Okay. So then I thought, well, when it came time to do a PhD, I thought, eh, let's just do that. Um, let's find out, because people don't seem to know about it. So I went, I went to Iran and I studied all this, and it was very difficult to get the materials. But anyway, that's my other child, there's uh -huh. um, And 
through various procedures which would take more time uh, to explain, I managed to get um, the documents, you know, I, well, I, I mean, I did a study on the law itself and its origins in um, classical Shiite law, but then I got, um, I was able to acquire documentary evidence um, of these penalties and their actual implementation and the fact that they're often denied in public. Sometimes they're not and sometimes they are. They live in a kind of quantum state in which it happens and it doesn't happen. Um, but anyway, um, and because I went to Iran um, on three occasions, first in order to learn the language and then in order to do this research about the criminal courts, um, I learned Persian and then I learned other, another level of Persian, namely legal Persian. And, and I was quite interested while I was doing this and freaking out about my possible failure and so on, and uh, my possible uh, demise at the hands of the Iranian secret police and so on. Um, um, I was also interested in observing myself learning these layers of language. So first, um, learning the language in theory, you know, the grammar and some vocabulary and, you know, the cat is under the table and all that. And then learning to be fluent in conversation and then lastly learning to read legal documents and legal treatises in Persian. And in all of these stages, or at least in the, the second and third, I was convinced that I would never manage because it was simply too much information to di digest in insufficient amount of time. So, um, but I managed and I don't know how my brain did it, but it evidently did. And it got to the point where I could speed, speed read legal Persian. Wow. Uh, yeah, whereas before, you know, I was, I was looking at these legal treatises and legal documents and I would have to loop something up in the dictionary multiple times, you know, like every three words or, or, or so. And I was very disheartened and I thought, I simply cannot acquire all this voc vocabulary, but then somehow I did. Um, so there you go. Anyway, so, oh, thank you. I don't know if you want to say anything specific or if you want to ask questions. Yeah, you know, one thing I was moved by is that uh, through your work, through work that you volunteered, you actually saved the life of someone, right? Well, I mean, basically um, what, what happened was that um, somebody was condemned to death by stoning mm -hmm. and um, I was able, so there was an Italian lawyer who volunteered to defend her and um, mm -hmm. I don't know really to what extent this would have been effective but in, in, in any case um, people had smuggled her documents out of Iran mm -hmm. and because I had native English and Italian mm. and it so happens that I had studied this topic I was able to translate all these documents mm -hmm. into native English and Italian mm -hmm. with legal commentary mm -hmm. so that I could identify because that was you know at the time it was I was dealing with this for hours every day so I was very familiar with all those laws and so I was able to um, pinpoint various ways in which this person could be saved by using the law mm. not by appealing to things like oh human rights standards or the universal declaration of human rights no, that doesn't work you know you have to use their own law you have to say look um, article x of the penal code says this and you know this principle of shiite law says that and blah 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 and so that's what i did i sent um, this lawyer and these human rights organizations, um, these translations and legal com commentaries. And eventually the person, um, I don't know if she was exonerated or pardoned, it's been a long time, mm -hmm. but yeah, the person ended up not dying. So, so that's, that's nice. I mean, I did a similar thing um, for someone in Nigeria, and I don't know if my input was at all effective, but um, I, I believe they're, they were using Maliki law and I got this thing from Amnesty International about how this person was condemned to be stoned to death and I, I immediately went and um, looked at you know, um, Maliki law like the Muwatta uh, of Malik and, and other things and I basically wrote all kinds of ways based on the information I had on the case in which the person could be saved by using their own laws and then I sent it to Amnesty and they said um, they answered, they, they said, Th thank you very much, we will be forwarding this to her legal team. I don't know if my, my bits had an effect, but she ended up um, not dying and being released, so that was good. Um, wow. But yeah, um, so it's weird how 
you know, mostly um, knowledge of this type is useless mm. and purely theoretical, but then occasionally it's the most useful thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, hurrah for hyper specialization. Great, They're really great. You know, thank you for this. I think, you know, like I have a community that the main audience of that who is trying to learn a new language or trying to improve their English and mm -hmm. uh, oh right I think it's a uh, it's a really inspiration to kind of consider you know how how the language can actually you know do something really really useful in the world so thank you for that I really appreciate it yeah I mean if you want to can explain very quickly what I told you about language learning because uh. that's useful to these people so basically, I'll try and be quick. Um, I started out learning Persian purely theoretically, as one would learn any language, like, this is a pen, mm. you know, the mouse is on the chair, mm -hmm. um, where is the post office, you know. Mm. And there was a little bit of conversation, but it was very stilted, very slow, very unnatural, because that's inevitable, um, because I wasn't Im immersed in the, in the environment. And then I would learn vocabulary, force myself to memorize it, but then when I landed in Iran, um, admittedly with almost a year between my last Persian class and my arrival in, in Iran, I landed at the airport. I couldn't understand anything that anyone said. It was just a kind of um, undifferentiated flow of sounds and I wasn't able to delineate the borders between words and I thought, oh dear, what have I done? I'm going to fail so badly. And then somehow, two days later, um, I was sitting in a university office and some official was telling me lots of bureaucratic stuff and logistical stuff about you know, where the library was and where the cafeteria was and then I realized that I was just understanding meanings. I, I could understand what he said. I, I, didn't, I don't know why this happened. And then from then on, my fluency, my conversational fluency increased very, very fast. And I would find myself saying things and not knowing how I knew them and using idioms and things like that and not knowing how I knew them. And so I would stop short and I'd say to my friend, wait, wait, did, did I just say something that meant something? Mm. My friend would say, yeah, it's fine. You said, okay. So that was one level, going from this is a pen to blah, 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 and being able to understand everything that people are saying and talk about all kinds of topics, you know, and understand films on the telly and so on. But then the next level was when I had to do the really specialized legal stuff, um, I hit another wall um, because these texts that I was having to read, legal treatises and legal documents, they were far, far too specialized for me to read. So I was having to look words up very, very, very frequently, many, many, many times per page. And having to read bo uh, books that were hundreds of pages long, how on earth was I going to do this? And so I was, of course, immersed in despair. And I, I don't know what the mechanism is, but I just continued anyway because I had no choice. So, you know, not continuing would have guaranteed failure, whereas at least continuing would have a non zero chance of success. And so I just kept memorizing these words, and then somehow it got to the point where the easiest thing for me to read were legal texts, legal documents, and legal treatises. Um, and I could just breeze through them. Um, and so while I'm not aware, as I said, of the mechanism which permits this, what I can say is that it happens. And um, so don't lose hope. Uh, just, just keep at it. Just make yourself do it. Memorize the stuff. But w what I found, anyway, in a nutshell is, first, memorize the theory, you know, like the, the grammar, I am, you are, all these kind of things. And then go to the environment and then it will somehow activate all those theoretical words um, like apple and cucumber and because you'll hear somebody saying where's the apple and oh where's the cucumber and so all those multiple um, sorry those multiple layers of memory will, will, um, will combine to your benefit um, and and then of course if you have to learn something more specialized or the literary language then I'm afraid you'll, you'll have to um, do lots of reading, lots and lots of reading. And I think that's even what happens in one's native language. Um, I am a bookworm, I've always been a bookworm, and I'm one of those wide vocabulary people. I think it's, I, I don't think it's entirely because I went to school, you know. Um, the, the real wide vocabulary happens because 
one route. So I don't know if this is helpful. I'm also being distracted by babies, but I hope it's helpful. Yeah, very helpful. At, 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 at any rate, I am one specimen. I'm a data point. I'm a data. I'm one specimen, and this me mechanism has shown itself empirically uh, to be functional, although I don't know its inner workings. And I hope it's helpful to others. Great. By the way, your language is so beautiful. It's, uh, Thank you. It's like a poetry to, yeah. to listen to. It's really, really beautiful. Well, that's very magnanimous of you to say. Thank you. Yeah. So, Thank you. As you see, the baby has uh, had a full portion of nerve juice and nannies to both, and this other baby is older and um, yeah. Yeah. is um, at this point very, actually very fascinated by phones and things. Yeah. So there Great. you go. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope it was useful.